what's up guys and welcome to another Doctor Who video on my channel. Okay, so if you're watching this you probably know what Gallifrey is. If you don't then it's a planet from the highly successful British TV show Doctor Who. But you most likely clicked on this video to find out if it actually is possible, in theory, for such a planet to actually exist in the real world. Taking into account the laws of physics and what we know about already existing planets, the species, elements and so on. So before I go any further, I want to thank the likes of Simon Clark and his Could Planets From Star Wars Really Exist video, who inspired me to do a video like this, and the film theorists for a Could A Time Lord Exist series. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the non-astronomical events that happened, the planet, or the inventions, or biology of the Time Lords for example in this video, but keep a lookout for videos like that in future, and subscribe so you won't miss them. I just want to note that as much as I adore the Doctor Who franchise, it isn't as consistent or as continuity fluent as the likes of bigger fictional universes like Star Wars or Harry Potter, that is. There will be more mistakes and plot holes in the over 50 years of running a TV series with countless writers throughout that time, many of which had clearly not done enough research into ideas that they wanted to portray before actually writing them, but I'm going off topic. I'll just point out that there is a real life term Gallifrey macula, but it is just referring to a dark part of the surface of Pluto and named after the fictional planet which is pretty epic and just an interesting bit of trivia on the side. Anyway, I'll start with the basic facts about the planet. So, Gallifrey is situated in the Casteverus constellation. Okay, a constellation is a real world thing, obviously. Check. This constellation has 17 suns, okay. You may or may not, however, want to ignore the fact that a constellation in real time is not a phenomenon situated in a fixed location, whereas how the Casteverus constellation is referenced suggests that it is a fixed location. This is one of the main examples of inconsistencies in the show's continuity, albeit a small one. So now, let's go into the galaxy that Gallifrey is said to be located. It is in the Mutter Spiral, which is actually what Time Lords seem to call the Milky Way, a real world galaxy, I hope. So that's another possibility to check. Again, there are some blur lines to this fact, but it is said to be about 30,000 light years from Earth. I'm not going to call the 1996 TV movie Doctor Who source citing that Gallifrey is 250 million light years away as canon, and Earth would not be able to share a galaxy which is only a hundred thousand light years wide, and as it seems ridiculously out of reach from the 29,000 and 30,000 light year sources, though it's possible it was in a completely different location at that time in the movie. The next thing I'll go into is the physical size. One story suggests that it is pretty much the same size as our Earth in the Dead Romance novel, but we're sticking with the account that suggests it is several times the size, which is also seen physically in the end of time episode. Obviously planets can be way 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 bigger than Earth's, so this is extremely plausible also. So it's so far looking good for those who viewed astrologers out there. Some other bits of info which seem plausible in the real world is that it exists in a binary star system, has two moons, and has rings similar to Saturn's, most likely made out of the ice and rock. It is said that Gallifrey is somewhere near the centre of its galaxy, so the Milky Way galaxy. And if we look here, the Earth is around 20,000 light years or so away from the centre, which aligns with all the information we have collected so far. The surface of Gallifrey realistic. The rust red type colour is certainly possible as we see it on Earth in other countries, as well as Greenland and snow in others. The 
orange sky at night would most likely be caused by the amount of orange coloured sand dust and Gallifrey having a thicker atmosphere. The red grass seems to suggest that it absorbs a significantly higher level of light frequencies than Earth, meaning that the vegetation would be able to photosynthesize more rapidly and could also be the answer for why Gallifreyans could advance in such a short amount of time. It's unclear, however, how the extra amount of oxygen produced does not change the Earth-like amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. It should also be noticed that the Pacific Gallifreyan moon was so bright that it was visible in the daytime and could have made the planet look even more copper-coloured on the surface. We've also got trees with silver leaves. Unless the leaves were actually made of silver, or metal in general, these don't seem very far-fetched at all. In fact, the planet is very similar to Mars in certain respects, as it is also containing a smaller amount of water on the surface than Earth, with three small oceans said to have been reduced in size over a very long lifespan of the planet, making water take less than half of the overall surface, probably due to heat. The gravity seems to be similar to Earth's, and the oxygen too. Although time work evolution may suggest that it may have less so too in places which correlate to the time world's ability to hold the Earth several times that of a human and live incredibly long in general. The surface temperature seems to vary somewhat more extremely than Earth's, however, as the Time Lords needed to invent weather control technology and it has been known for sunburn to be possible even during the summer of an ice age. The sky is said to be green, yellow and purple in colour, and sometimes blue, meaning that the wavelengths of light must be inconsistent, possibly due to the existence of two suns, though only one is not artificial. The population of Gallifreyans seem to be a little larger than Earth's, which make a lot of sense considering it is about three times the size of the latter, and is not as habitable. Now, there is not a lot of information about population in any sources that I can find, but it is mentioned that there were about 2.4 billion children at the time of the end of the Time War. So, about 130% of the Earth's child population. Meaning, if the birth rate is somewhat similar to Earth, we'd have an estimate of somewhere around 10 billion total. This could vary a lot though, especially as Gallifreyans could easily have ceased reproduction considerably during such a war period. But the population figures seem plausible nonetheless, and Gallifreyans aren't known to have much of a sex drive usually being created away from the natural method. We've also got some animals, or fauna, as well as flora, existing on the orange planet, like flies, other insects, reptiles, owls, and other mammals. Some are similar to Earth's, and some are different in small ways, such as meter-long rats with 15 legs. So for the most part, in conclusion, it would seem that the existence of Gallifrey would not have had to break many real-world laws of the universe in order to exist. The biology of the Time Lord and time travel technology itself is a different story though, but that is for another video. Thank you so much for watching guys, and please give it a like and subscribe for more in-depth analysis on the Doctor Who universe. This is sequence dematerializing until the next video.